Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. During the campaign, when leaks of hacked emails were helping Trump, he couldn't get enough of them. WikiLeaks, I love WikiLeaks. That was then. Now it's a different story. I've actually uh, called the Justice Department to look into the leaks. Those are criminal leaks. The leaks have hounded Trump. An account of his lonely bedtime ritual of watching television news in his bathrobe prompted this from his press secretary. I don't think the president owns a bathrobe. He definitely doesn't wear one. Debating colorful details like that, not normal. Nor is learning that Trump's incoming national security advisor, Michael Flynn, talked sanctions with Russia's ambassador before the inauguration and then lied about it. General Flynn is a wonderful man. I think he's been treated very, very unfairly by the media. And normal is not the word you'd use for revelations that Trump associates had repeated contact with Russian spies during the campaign. And Trump's presidency, remember, is just a month old. There's a sense in which a normal Washington ritual has been accelerated and amplified in this administration. That ritual is leaking, and legal scholar David Posen has been studying it for years. A busy man nowadays as the world leans in to listen to the whispers out of Washington. The U.S. has a very robust tradition of um, uh, anonymous disclosures to the press um, uh, being a way in which um, major abuses are called out, but also just much more mundane, parochial, bureaucratic struggles are, are waged on a weekly basis. People that are entrusted with national security secrets and classified information are leaking it out. That's a real concern for this president. How often have Americans heard that kind of anger? Secretary of State Kissinger, at times visibly angry, today denounced the leakage of the Intelligence Committee report. Frequently, investigations seem to lead nowhere. Tonight, the administration ordered another investigation to find out who is responsible for these latest juicy revelations. Threats against the press almost always follow. For several weeks now, the Reagan administration has been threatening to take strong legal action against news organizations in an effort to plug leaks of classified information. Efforts that fizzle in part because plugging a leak can be politically dangerous. Well, I'm not a crook. Richard Nixon knew FBI Deputy Director Mark Felt was deep throat, the leaker sinking his presidency. Hard to hit someone who can hit back. Therefore, I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Watergate, then the Pentagon Papers, then the Iran-Contra scandal that stained the Reagan administration. Those images of U.S. abuse of prisoners at Iraq's Abu Ghraib prison, all this and more courtesy of critical information leaked to the press. Often in U.S. history, the White House has been a source of restraint on leak investigations, worried about where they might lead, um, worried about political civil society and media backlash. The laws on the books against leaking in the U.S. are really broad, and yet the historic rate of enforcement has been trivial. Under Barack Obama, there was a crackdown of sorts, at least eight prosecutions under the U.S. Espionage Act, far more than under all former presidents combined. Leaks related to national security can put people at risk. Journalists were snooped on, subpoenaed, their sources jailed. But even in the age of massive leakers like Chelsea Manning and Edward Snowden, that zeal seemed to flag. In the second term of the Obama administration, they brought fewer cases. They introduced new guidelines in 2014 and then again in 2015, making it harder to subpoena journalists uh, to seek information about their confidential sources. Um, and in a lot of ways, the administration um, scaled way back and uh, did not want to be seen as leaving an anti-leak legacy. And the old equilibrium of significant toleration of leaks seemed to have been restored. Um, that's the ambiguous legacy that President Trump has inherited. If Trump's crackdown materializes, whoever leaked the classified information that led to Flynn's dismissal could face years in prison. The documents and papers that were illegally, I stress that, illegally leaked. But most of the leaks over the past month have involved misdemeanors at most, and Trump may not be able to rely on more secrecy to solve this problem. 
that's actually a somewhat um, well-known vicious cycle that happens where you have leaks starting to happen that are seen as damaging to the White House. A reaction to those leaks is to clamp down on uh, access and information control. Uh, that produces more disgruntlement, you know, and uh, feelings of alienation by the bureaucracy. Therefore, more leaks about what's happening. Therefore, more uh, 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 tightening of the circle, and uh, and it becomes pathological. The more sudden and radical his moves, the more federal workers are maligned, the more wash and leaks Washington could become. That's something that Nazi Germany would have done and did do. I think it's a disgrace. That information that was false and fake and never happened got released to the public. If, if they continue to have a very uh, aggressive adversarial relationship with the traditional bureaucracy, um, then it's hard to see things uh, stopping. <laughs> Comforting or enraging? That depends on how you feel about Donald Trump and how you feel about his brand of change in a town that is notoriously set in its ways.